If you love banana ketchup, why would you eat something with more water and sugar in it than actual banana? And what the f is sodium benzoate anyway? If you like banana ketchup, I'm gonna show you how to make it the real way. Hey guys, John Rivera here uh, from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, previously from restaurant Lume. Today, uh, I'm gonna be making for you my banana ketchup. So banana ketchup, well, it's a condiment. I guess as Filipinos, we're all used to having Jufran or UFC, something that we grew up with. Personally, I actually didn't like banana ketchup myself growing up. I guess growing up in the Western world, you think it's a little bit weird. Till recently that I realized the importance of it in our culture how uh, it was created out of necessity to pretty much feed people and now it's become a staple in our diet. So my version here is a little bit of what I think would be the original recipe that Maria Arosa made decades ago with real bananas. I think with the flavor of banana ketchup, UFC banana ketchup gets it right. You know, tamis anghang. That's what we're looking for. It's gonna be a nice balance of sweet, sour, salty and anghang and spice right at the end. The most important ingredient in your banana ketchup is in the name. So you need really nice ripe bananas. Take it further than how you would usually eat it. That's when the banana has more sugar than it has starch. The second most important ingredient in that is a very good vinegar. Choose a vinegar that has a high sugar content that's sour but leans on the sweeter side. So today we're going to be using a banana peel vinegar uh, made for me by my friend over at Fermien. What he does is he takes all of my leftover banana peels uh, from our production of Toron Gelato uh, with Cariton Sorbetes. If you can't get banana peel vinegar, coconut vinegar, something like that would be nice as a substitute for this dish. So the first step is to get your kind of aromatics uh, prepped. So we've got a red onion, just chop it up roughly. So garlic, I'm not even gonna chop it up. Just do what your mum does. This is how I learned to peel garlic when I was growing up. Crush it, get that skin off, and these big bits of garlic can go straight into the Nutribullet as well. So a good knob of ginger, just peel it down with a spoon. Peeling it down with a spoon means that you're not wasting so much of it. So I lied before, the ginger you have to cut a little bit thinner just to help the blades, and that way you get a really smooth paste. So then we're gonna go with some jalapenos as well. I don't take the seeds out because they're not that spicy. They add more of this floral complexity to the sauce. You know, if you don't like it too maanghang or too spicy, just you can always take those seeds out. So to help this get going in the Nutribullet, instead of putting a liquid in there, we're going to put the oil that we're going to be using. Okay. So that's what you should get after blending up your aromatic vegetables. We're not going to wash this jug out because you've got all that flavor in there. What we're going to do is we're going to add the bananas and all the liquids that we're going to be adding later on to the recipe. The banana peel vinegar, the soy sauce. In this case, I'm using mushroom soy sauce. Keeps more umami in here and more complex flavor. But if you can't get mushroom soy sauce, you can just use regular light soy sauce. And of course, patis because patis makes the world go round. So after blending aromatic vegetables uh, and your bananas, you should be left with kind of these two breakfast smoothies. Don't drink them, it's not gonna be nice. So get that hot on like a medium-ish heat. And then we're gonna... So I forgot to tell you, stand back when you do that, but I bet it made great visual for YouTube. So what you want to do is pretty much just cook this down. You want to evaporate all that moisture that's in those vegetables. And in turn, when you evaporate that moisture, you intensify the flavor. You start sauteing it pretty much. And once it starts caramelizing, then we can add the rest of the vegetables. From what we had before, which is like this breakfast smoothie texture, now you're starting to get all that oil that we blended into those vegetables to separate out and all that moisture has evaporated. You see the beautiful green hue of that oil, that's going to be full of flavor and fragrance and that's what is going to make this banana ketchup so much more complex. You know, I think Filipino food through the ages has moved toward necessity and convenience. Growing up, you know, my parents were both professionals but they didn't really have much time to cook. So when we moved overseas, I thought that sinigang and stuff came out of, literally came out of a mamacita packet. 
all those flavor bases and that's it, it was magic. I really want to go back to how we were cooking before. I think understanding more about our food and our cuisine and in turn our culture, how rich it is, how diverse it is, that'll really interest you know, a lot of non-Filipinos with our food, you know? Because the world, I think the world is ready. The world is accepting of, of our food. Not talking shit, but I guess we look towards more other cuisines first before our own when we eat out, right? And we keep Filipino food at home. Why is that? I hold it just as high as these celebration foods, quote unquote, that we think they are. And I guess as Filipinos, we have our responsibility to be the guide for that, you know what I mean? Like, if we just be a little bit more proud of it, people will really catch on to it. You want to add your tomato paste in now to cook that out. You'll know it's ready when the oil starts to split out and the oil has now got this beautiful, intense orange color. So at this stage, we add the spices, the turmeric, smoked paprika, allspice, and cayenne pepper. Now, allspice is the one spice that you typically would find in banana ketchup. And saute that out for another couple of minutes just to toast those spices in that fat. So now this is the stage now where we add the blended up bananas. So the one thing about this banana ketchup is that you're not buying mostly water with red food coloring. In turn, it's gonna be a lot more viscous, a lot more body. We're gonna add in the brown sugar. Now don't be scared of how much brown sugar we're adding to this. This is also about two kilos worth of banana ketchup. And that's going to be a couple breakfasts for you guys. Uh, you want to reduce it down by about a quarter to a third and it gets really jammy and thick. Stir it a couple times along the way. Depends what you're using, it shouldn't stick to the bottom of the pot, um, but it never hurts to be on the safe side. Been simmering for about 15 to 20 minutes. So this is pretty much done now. So what you're really looking for is that it just holds when you kind of stir it. And then also by taste, we can taste when everything's more homogenous and has developed. At this point, you're really gonna season for now with the sea salt. It's just to accentuate the banana flavor in it. So at this point also, you can adjust the seasoning how you like. Maybe you like it sweeter. Maybe you like it more sour. So feel free to add more sugar, more vinegar, more soy sauce, more cayenne pepper if you like it more spicy. Uh, really, you know, take this recipe as a guide and move it so that it works with your palate.